Welcome to 5 and 5 from One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key aspects of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Aftermath from Plaid Hat Games. Quick disclosure, I was sent a review copy of this game. Aftermath is the third adventure book game from Plaid Hat, following up Stuffed Fables and Comanauts. In this case, it's set in a somewhat post-apocalyptic world where only animals are left alive after all humans disappear from the face of the Earth. It has a fairly open-ended campaign where you and your animal companions try to discover the world around you, find allies, and fight off enemies. But does mixing mice and mystics and this war is mine make a game fun? Let's find out and get to the list. We're going to start out with a mix, and this is one that's been consistent in the other adventure book games I've played. Four different player characters come in the game, and they each have their own unique starting item, their own unique set of skills they can upgrade into. They each also have slightly different bonuses to some of the skills you can do in the game. For a fairly streamlined game, this is usually enough. They do feel a little bit different, and they have their own little flavor. But where this falls into a mix for me, on the upgrading side, getting items isn't as exciting as it could be, because like in Stuffed Fables, the numbers are very small. It's like most of the weapons will be plus one, a couple might be plus two, and that's it. And then on the skills side, it's actually quite expensive, and it usually takes a little while to save up cards that'll power your skills. So even though they do feel pretty cool, they come into play so infrequently that they don't differentiate your characters as much as I'd like. But we're following that mix with the big pro, and that's the world building in this game and how unique and cleverly the theme is brought out. So you've got a lot of narrative in the book, and I found it generally well written and interesting. But beyond that, the art is gorgeous and kind of gives you this animal post-apocalypse, which is a super fun concept. The miniatures are amazing. They have like this washed kind of dip effect, so all of their details are brought out. And with this discovery deck, which lets you find new encounters and new missions and new allies and new factions to fight, they've created a persistent, breathing, feeling world that I think is super interesting to explore. We're back to a mix, though, for number three, and that's the variety in the gameplay and how different it's going to feel game to game. On the positive side, the missions you'll go on will generally end up at very unique locations that you can only see in that mission with fun effects like escorting people or protecting them or fighting a little war. And there's a big deck of encounters you can draw from and unique encounters for each page of the book that'll keep things kind of new and fresh. But on the negative side, you have a very small pool of enemies to draw from, and kind of like the items, the enemies really aren't that different when you get down to it. And the core gameplay itself can become somewhat repetitive. You'll have to go through the same locations very frequently as you go to your mission destination, so you might see the same stuff. So it feels varied at times, incredibly ingenious at times, but at other times it feels like you've seen it all before and fought these rats ten times and it's just not that exciting anymore. But we're back to a pro again for number two, and that's the cards and actions in the game and how they've kind of adapted the dice system from Comanauts and Stuff Fables. So on a player's turn, they draw up to five cards, keeping any cards they had from previous turns. They can play as many cards as they want, and this is a very flexible system, more flexible than it's been in any of the other games in this series. You can move with any card, you can defend with any card, and every character can do melee and range attacks even if they don't have a weapon, so you really have a wide range of options available to you and never feel like your turn is entirely wasted. And even if you don't love your cards, you can pass them to someone else, and again, in a much more flexible way than the previous games in the system, you can keep as many cards as you want. So if you have three cards that are close to what you need, you can wait for next turn, draw two more, you won't advance the enemies that much, and you'll have a lot of strategic choice in kind of how you control the tempo of the game. And on top of that, while there is some randomness because you do roll one or two dice and kind of add it to your card play, you have a ton of control over whether you're going to win or lose a challenge based on how many cards you commit, so it feels the least random of all of these games in many ways. We're ending with two pros in a row, although this final one does have a caveat, and that is the campaign structure in the game. So this is not Mice and Mystics, this is not Stuffed Fables, where you just progress through one mission after another, and despite some branching, it's pretty linear. Here, you get to choose what mission you go on, and you have a wide range of choices, and going on some missions will unlock others. But you can really choose how you want to explore the world, how you want to build your journey up, build your colony, which I haven't even mentioned yet, you have this colony you're upgrading. It's incredibly addictive. Missions in both the co-op and solo games I've played have only taken maybe 45 minutes to an hour, so you can 
crank out one or two in a session and you always get something cool. You get to upgrade your colony, discover new cards, see new things. Now I did say there's a caveat here and it doesn't take away the pro status of this one for me, but it is something you should be aware of. The game seems very open-ended at first and you can go on a wide range of missions. But to win the game, you have to complete the sort of life goals of the four characters you have, and those are very consistent in forcing you to go on specific endgame missions. But with those missions and the life goals, when you finish a campaign and win, you'll basically have seen everything the game has to offer. You'll have made choices over which order you attack all those things and how you do so and how you build up your colony, but you're basically going to have every upgrade and you're basically going to have seen every mission when you win. So if you can't tell, this is by far my favorite game in the adventure book series and also my favorite Jerry Hawthorne design in general. Here I feel the core gameplay with the changeover to cards feels better, feels more in my control, feels more strategic and tactical. I also think this campaign is the best work he's done. It's a mix of really tight world building and emergent storyline that while you will eventually reach the same end goal, does give you a feeling of agency and choice in the world. Now that said, there are some cautions you should be aware of just to get them out real quick. Dice can feel random and you can still sometimes just get cards that won't do what you want them to do, so that can be frustrating. The campaign, while it is fairly open-ended, still leads you to the same point and is about 15 missions long, I think, for most people to finish finish it. So, you know, that might not be as much as you want if you look at crazy games like Gloomhaven. The enemies aren't as varied as I'd like. The characters aren't as differentiated as I'd like. And one final thing I didn't mention, but it's worth noting, the rule book is way shorter than it should have been. Just know that when you read the rules, you're probably going to get confused by some things. But by the time that you're getting the game, there will probably be an FAQ available and you can ask questions on BGG and clear it up. But it could be a little frustrating. It's not my favorite rule book, a little too streamlined and not enough examples to make things clear. But all that said, Aftermath, great game. Once it comes out, I highly recommend you pick it up. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.